Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we are going to apply the natural log to both sides of this equation. So on the left side, we have the natural log of y. On the right side, we have the natural log of this whole quotient right here, x minus 2 squared over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay. Now the whole purpose of applying the natural log to both sides is so that we can use our properties of logarithms on that right side to take that from being a quotient involving two chain rules uh, to split that up so that it's not quite as nasty as this. So we're going to leave the natural log of y for right now on the left side. Uh, we're going to split up this logarithm. The logarithm of a quotient can be split into the log of uh, or excuse me, the difference of logs. And I'm going to go ahead and write x with the square root of x squared plus 1 as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Because remember, that's another property of logarithms that we can use uh, to help us out is the power rule. All right, now, at this point, let me show you why at the very beginning it says x cannot equal 2. Now, typically, when we're talking about rational functions, 2 is not an issue because 2 just gives us 0 in the numerator. Okay? But the reason why this is put on there is because when we apply the natural log to both sides, remember, we can't take the log of negative numbers or 0. So if x were 2 right here in this step, 2 minus 2 is 0, we can't take the natural log of 0. Um, now, we don't have an issue with the other one because x plus 1, x squared plus 1 is always greater than uh, 0. Never equals 0, it's never negative. Uh, so that's why that qualification is on there. You don't really have to stress out over that. I just wanted to explain well, why, where does this not equal 2 thing come from. Okay, uh, so one more step here in using our properties of logarithms before we actually take the derivative, uh, make those exponents coefficients. Okay. So all we've done right now is uh, rewrite this using logarithms. Now we're actually going to take the derivative. So what is the derivative of the natural log of something? 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. Okay. So the left side is 1 over y times y prime is equal to the 2 stays. We've got 1 over x minus 2. Just for the sake of being clear, I'm going to multiply that by 1, because that's the derivative of x minus 2, minus 1 half times 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x, because that's the derivative of x squared plus 1. Now, let's make this look a little bit nicer. Uh, on the left side, I'm just going to write that as y prime over y. We've got 2 over x minus 2 uh, minus those 2's cancel, the 1 half and the 2 cancel. So we've just got x over x squared plus 1. Now we haven't actually found the derivative yet because we've got y prime over y. We've taken the derivative, but we haven't actually isolated the derivative. So we need to multiply both sides by y. And when we do that, we need to write it as what y originally equaled. Okay, x minus 2 squared over the square root of x uh, plus 1. x minus 2 squared over the square root of x squared plus 1 times 2 over x minus 2 minus x over x squared plus 1. Now, technically, there's some simplifying that we can do there, but I really don't think that, um, that the AP exam is going to emphasize that. Um, I really think that they're going to, yeah, the book simplifies it a little bit more. But really, I'm going to leave it at that point, okay? I'm, I'm going to leave it at that point. There's really no point in uh, simplifying that further. Um, 
just look at your answer choices. If they don't really look like that, then you're just going to have to get a common denominator inside the parentheses right here um, and go from there. Okay? All right, let's look at another example. Okay? Uh, now, this is really when logarithmic differentiation comes into uh, comes in handy. Now, in the last one, yeah, uh, I really don't want to do the quotient rule with, with all that stuff in the last problem. Uh, but here is an example of something that we can't even take the derivative of with the rules that we have. Um, because x is the base and it's in the exponent. Okay, We have rules when x is the base and we have a number for the exponent. That's our power rule. We have a rule if we have a number as the base and x is the exponent, that's our exponential derivative rules, but we don't have a rule when x is in the base and in the exponent. It, it, this is not 2x times x2, 2x minus 1. Okay, that's not the derivative of this thing. Okay, uh, so we have to use logarithmic differentiation here. We have to take the natural log of both sides. So we've got the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x to the 2x which we can then rewrite that right side as 2x natural log of x, okay? Here's why it says that x has to be greater than 0, because we have x inside of a logarithm. Um, so that number, whatever that number is, has to be bigger than 0. All right, now we can take the derivative, okay? The derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y times y prime. What do we have to use on the right side? Product rule. 2x times the natural log of x. So first times the derivative of the second plus derivative of the first times the second. It's nice. We've got some simplifying that we can do here. Uh, the x's cancel there, so we have 2 plus 2 natural log of x. And then we just need to multiply both sides by y. So y prime is equal to um, 2x to the 2x, okay, I'm distributing the 2 and uh, 2 natural log of x to the y here. So then we've got plus 2x to the 2x natural log of x. Probably would be nicer to have that in factored form as opposed to the way that I have it right here. Factor out that 2x to the 2x, 1 plus the natural log of x. Okay. But again, you just need to look at your answer choices, see how they express it, but I can back guarantee you they're going to have it in factored form. Okay. Um, the derivative of 2x times the natural log of x, the derivative of the first times the second, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. 1 over x, yes. Okay. Times 1. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when I multiply both sides by y, I go back to the original and I see, well, what is y equal to? y is equal to x to the 2x. So 2 times y, 2 times x to the 2x, and 2 natural log of x times y equals x to the 2x. So I just distributed it in the equation. I shouldn't have really distributed it. I should have just left it and factored out the 2. So we've got to get rid of this y in the denominator. So we multiply those sides. Mm -hmm. and then we don't want to mix x's and y's over here. So we plug in what y is equal to. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's really all there is to it.